Afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Garage Band Weekly. Thank you, Cronk Song, for playing us in. The first time I've ever played along to that song by Cronk Song. Uh, oh, just in the headphones. Uh, welcome on this show where we're going to be talking about a bunch of things. But uh, yeah, not surprisingly, uh, we've got guitars going on here. So uh, we're going to be looking at the Garage Band Guitar Amp Sims, a very underrated feature in Garage Band. And I've, uh, I'm all hooked up here and ready to go. As you can see, we've got my camera too here, so I can show you how we plug in to the Steinberg UR22C interface, throw it up here onto Garage Band, and uh, record some guitars and have some fun. Because it's December, it's nearly the holidays. Well, it is the holidays for many folks. And uh, it's time to have some fun. It's time to get back to having fun with music. <laughs> and uh, getting, our, getting our cables caught up. We should probably, uh, I should probably turn the monitoring off there. Uh, we do have the GarageBand set up all going on over here on the iPad, which has now turned itself off because that's how it rolls, but that's okay. We'll go with the flow. Uh, so yeah, today we're talking about, um, we're talking about guitars, uh, but we do have some news and notes. We've got a rant of the week. We've got tip of the week and we've got app of the week as well. So there's a whole bunch going on here on the show. Why don't we jump in and start talking about the news and the notes of the week and uh, the, 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 the big news. <laughs> that has been frustrating a lot of people. I'm just going to rip it off like a band-aid here, and that is that the Mixbox app in iOS has had some issues. So if you've been following along at home, what happened is last week, about a week ago, uh, IK Multimedia updated the Mixbox CS app on iOS on the iPad and uh, what they did is they actually made a free version. That's pretty cool. The paid version was like 50 bucks and it had 72 plugins. They released a free version that has eight of those plugins and then there was an in-app purchase to get the rest of them. Challenge here was that unfortunately it kind of broke things for people that updated the app that had the original version that they'd purchased. So myself and many other folks have had some challenges over the last week trying to get it back up and running. Here's here's the Cliff Notes version of all of this. They have now released a new version of Mixbox uh, and it is version 2, 1.3.2. Uh, so if you're a Mixbox user and you've been having these issues, they've been working away for the last week to try and get it sorted. And uh, if you open up your Mixbox, go to your version and just make sure that you're running the latest version. Because what was happening is, even if you'd purchased it, if you came in here, none of your, you'd only have the, the eight free ones. You didn't have any of the other ones. So if you are having that problem and you're on Mixbox, all you need to do is go to your app store and search Mixbox, hit the update button, and then come in here, tap in the top right corner and go to info and make sure you are running version one point three point two build number two now there is uh, one other thing that is still causing trouble and that is if you're using uh, i believe cubasis has the same problem GarageBand definitely has this problem which is that if you have tracks that you've already created that use mixbox then uh yeah it's not really still working the way it should so if i come in here if we find uh this one that i did here this is a demo song that i did using mixbox a while ago uh, as you can see when you load it up it gives you that error there it says mixbox is not installed on your ipad and uh, then if you go in here, you can see it's grayed out there. So I believe that they're still working on a fix for this one. So we may see a 1.3.3 that might fix things for that. But I know it's been the talk of the town and the news and, and oh, oh, my rant actually relates to this a bit later. But here's the thing. IK Multimedia were trying to do a pretty cool thing. They were trying to give people a free taste of this app to see if they liked it. And I actually think that's pretty good. Not a big fan of the premium, uh, freemium model usually, but if you're going to give someone a full feature version that had eight of the very cool plugins for free, then I think that's cool. Unfortunately, unintended consequences. And we see this with updates of apps all the time. It's not a new thing and it's an unfortunate thing that happens there. Uh, the, the good news is you can now re-add it. So what I've done here is I've re-added it to this track and uh, it works fine here in GarageBand with a new track. So if you're creating a new track, but the problem is if you've got an existing song and if you've got your existing presets, they're all grayed out there. So short of going in here and removing that, taking that one off and adding in a new version, there's not much you can do. Here's my tip though. Don't go away and do that. Don't go away and just start messing with things. Just, just wait. 
just just play the waiting game. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll save the rest of what I wanted to say about this to my rant a little bit later on uh, in the show. But um, just wanted to cover that up front because I know it's, it's caused some people some frustration. And it, it's a thing at a place. You know what? It, it happens. <laughs> it happens and it's going to happen again. And it's going to happen in the future. So you, you, people are going to need to just um, prepare themselves that things don't always work perfectly. Uh, life doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. Some dude put that in a song one time. That's what I heard. Uh, let's move on, shall we? And uh, get on to uh, other more... Uh, more happy time stories and I've really only got one more thing for you here today in the uh, in the intro and that is that um, our man Patrick over at the Garage Band Guide has put together a very cool video. If you are in the market for the new updates to Garage Band, Fields Forever. Sorry, uh, that was his voice over there. The new producer packs. What Patrick here has done is he's put together a super cut of all of the different packs. The ultimate guide, 47 minutes of Patrick goodness to show you all of the different ones. So he goes through all the different packs. Watch the sound. Oak Felder, Mark Litteri, Tom Mish, uh, Track Girl, uh, Soul Lection. We've got Boys Noise and Take a Day Trip. Now, I've done, I've done reviews of these as well and you're more than welcome to watch my reviews. Uh, but Patrick's done some cool reviews there as well and I say that you diversity is the key here make sure that you're not just looking at one person's stuff look at Patrick's um, reviews as well as mine because you might pick up you know nay you will pick up different things when you watch his videos compared to mine so jump on over and check that out and it's funny I was talking to Patrick after he released it and I, I said to him I had uh, that idea like a day like yesterday and uh, and I was going to do something similar with all the packs and all the producer packs and then uh, I'm like oh no Patrick beat me to it uh, so what I'm probably going to do because I've actually reviewed every single pack that's come out since uh, since GarageBand 2.1. So I may, may steal that idea or steal my own idea and go back and do a supercut of all of the different packs, just every pack as it came out. Uh, I think that could be a bit of fun because uh, I, I myself can't find some of those early ones. So I'll have to go and find my original videos to find them out. Uh, a couple of things, uh, that sort of news and notes around the channel. Uh, we've got uh, the Creator Town Hall, got the Lily Pillies who I've seen here in the chat, a special guest on this week's Creator Town Hall. So that should be a heap of fun talking to them about creating and uh, we've also got Your Music Live and a Christmas version is coming soon. So if you're not on the mailing list, get yourself on the mailing list because there'll be a link soon or, or join the Create, Record, Release Facebook group because I'll have a link soon. Haven't set it up yet, but I'll have a link soon to a special, uh, not Christmas, what are we calling it? A non-denominational holiday edition <laughs> with annual gift man who lives on the moon. Um, yeah, so we'll be doing a holiday edition of Your Music Live and that'll be coming up really soon. So uh, stay tuned for that. All right, don't forget, if you do have questions and you are here live, or if you're on the replay, if you're here live, you can chuck the word question down in the comments. So just put question at the start of your comment and then ask a question. It just means it'll highlight it and I'll be able to see your question amongst all the other chatter going on. And uh, this week, we're actually brought to you by my GarageBand FAQ. Yeah, you may not know this, but over at studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand, I've got a one-stop shop to all things GarageBand iOS, my GarageBand iOS FAQ. So right up the top there, not surprisingly, I've got my own GarageBand Beginner's Guide for $10. So if you want a complete shortcut to get started, you can do that. But I've got a bunch of links here. I've got my overview of GarageBand, how to start your first project, how to set up a project, my complete quick jam series, and my essentials playlist as well. And then if you come on down here, I've got an alphabetized FAQ. So how to do all the different things that you're going to run across, everything from uh, automation to compression to EQ to FX to keyboards to mastering to merging to MIDI. Uh, so that's all laid out there for you and it's all free and it's all ready to go at studiolivetoday.com slash garage band. And we thank me for my support of my own show. <laughs> All right, let's get on with things here. Uh, let's uh, let's see if we've got any questions here. We'll say a quick good day to the people that are here. Hello to Bear. Hello to Gino Torres. Hello to uh, Gary Hubs. It's okay. The other chatter is great. We love it. Uh, Desolate morning. Uh, Lily Pellies are here. Christmas carols? Question mark. Yeah, sure. Uh, Christmas carols are fine. Uh, are you drinking a Cooper's? No, it is uh, nine thirty a.m. Not drinking a Cooper's yet. Uh, Mark Letary with snark Snarky Puppy is amazing. Yeah, Mark Letary is a very, very cool dude. Uh, I didn't know much about him till this pack, but that was good. Uh, hey, Pete, when is going to update for GarageBand for the Mac? Don't believe there's any plans currently for a GarageBand Mac update. Nothing that I've seen on the grapevine, and they did have a 
reasonably big update for the latest version in Monterey recently. So, uh, no, I don't, I don't see another big update. They, they had all the packs put in there, which is a good thing. So, all the packs that we have here in GarageBand iOS, you could use in GarageBand Mac, which is good news. Uh, question, whammy pedal plugin. There is no GB virtual whammy pedal, but I want one. Uh, yeah, no, there's, there's really not. Uh, there is on, here's a weird thing. There is on the virtual guitar and we'll talk guitars in just a moment. There is on the virtual guitar, but there isn't on the, the regular one. So if we, if we jump over here to garage band, if you grab the regular guitar here, you've actually got yourself a, assuming you're talking a wah, a whammy, a whammy is more the whammy bar, but the, there is a wah. Actually, you probably, yeah, there's not really a whammy at all, is there? No. So forget, forget what I was saying there, but you do have, if you come in here and you select your retro wah guitar you do have a wah pedal here so that when you play uh, not plugged in hang on we'll plug in just so that we can give a quick demonstration of this you uh, when you play you are going to get uh, there you go <laughs> I know it's not you can wire it up there but yeah, we don't have a similar kind of wiring going on over, uh, or, or any sort of um, whammy bar, which would be cool. But I don't know quite how you do a whammy bar. And I don't, to be honest, I don't even own a guitar. You, you'll see in a moment, I use a Les Paul most of the time. So I'm not a whammy bar kind of guy. <laughs> I'm going to get a t-shirt printed that says that. Not a whammy bar kind of guy. Uh, yeah, no, there's, so there's no whammy. No whammy at all. Denied. Uh, I think I saw another question. Did I? What was the name of the plugin you showed that has multiple plugin built in? You said it was your favorite. Uh, was that Mixbox? That's what I was talking about at the start. So Mixbox CS. Um, and look, yeah, it's, it's a great plugin. It's probably not my absolute favorite or go-to uh, because I don't use it that much. But uh, yeah, if you want a bit of everything, it's got a bit of everything. And that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, so we will get into the uh, the feature topic, but we're going to show a few things. So I'm going to have a rant. We're going to show a plugin or app of the week and then a tip of the week and then into the feature topic because it'll all be related. It'll all cascade down into us recording some guitars. So if you're, if you're watching on the replay, I'm going to have timestamps down below, but about 10 or 15 minutes we'll be rocking out and actually playing some guitar and some bass as you saw me play in the intro there. But rant to the week. All right. Can everyone uh, do it with me? Take a deep breath. And exhale. Because I think we need to relax. The one thing that I've learned from the last week in particular is that a lot of folks spend a lot of time worrying and commenting and complaining about something that they have zero control over. And I worry about this. I worry about this a lot because we only have a finite amount of time to create, most of us. So you don't have 24 seven, you've got other commitments, you've got things to do. And I'm really concerned that a lot of people are spending a lot of that time worrying about what they can't do and what they're not doing and not getting on and actually creating. Now, I know, because the first comment and the first response down in the thing will be, but it's unacceptable, this is a big company. And we're talking about IK Multimedia and Mixbox. This is a big company, how could they possibly make a mistake? I've made mistakes and I will continue to make mistakes. The biggest companies in the world make mistakes on the daily. It's all about how they rectify that. And look, have, have IK handled this perfectly? Have they communicated brilliantly? No, but are they working their asses off to fix it up and have put out two, two new updates and are trying desperately to get it all working again for their audience? Yes, they are. So I just wanted to, to put it out there to say, if you are really upset and frustrated by this, that is cool. I'm not going to tell you how to feel, but let it go. Like, just get, get over that. Like, get, get to that point where you're like, yes, I don't like this. It's not acceptable. And I wish it was different. And then move on to the next thing. Because I just see people getting stuck, just it's sticking, it's like glue, and they can't seem to push out of it. And the other thing, so I saw, because I, I said this to a few people, and then I stopped talking, because it wasn't adding any value, I realized I'd started scrolling past any posts. But the, the one thing that someone said is, oh, I was about to play a gig, and then uh, my thing updated, and then it wasn't working. And you know, say it with me, folks, and I say this every time there's an iOS update, a Mac update, an app update. If you have an essential project or you have an essential thing that you're in the middle of, do not update anything. If I'm about to do a live show, if I'm doing your music live tomorrow and I get my Mac OS update notification saying, hey, Pete, there's a great new update. You want to update your Mac? I'd be like, heck no, because I don't know what that update's going to do. It's probably going to crash my reflector or StreamYard won't play nicely or the driver for my mixer won't work. So I'm going to 
do whatever important projects are. And then when I have a gap of time where I don't have anything major important, then I'll do my updates. And I know hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah, you can look back and go, oh, but I didn't know, but I expected better. Yeah, all cool. But what are you going to do about it? And hey, at the end of the day, if it actually makes you feel better to get out there and rant and, and it's cathartic for you, then more power to you. But um, I just saw a lot of folks spending a lot of time this week and I worry that they, their creativity for the week has been damaged by their desire to get out there and complain about things that they can't do that. Exactly. Uh, relax and uh, use some other apps in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh and yeah and it works it um so yeah and if you do if you do reinstall it it will work so if you check the start of the the video i showed you how you can do that sometimes you just gotta let it go yeah exactly exactly right um so uh we're gonna move on because that's it if you can't change it go with the flow um yeah and look vote with if you want to if you if you're that upset about it use something different like vote vote with your feet vote with your wallet that that's the that's the bottom line with this stuff is that uh yeah uh, you've got free stuff in fact it's a good segue because you've got free you've got free plugins in GarageBand and you've actually got a plethora of free plugins in GarageBand that we're going to show you in a moment and you've got free guitar amp stems that actually sound kind of cool and we're going to try and uh, prove that case in point here today by playing some guitar all right let's um let's move on to our plugin or app of the week and what i'm going to go to here because we're recording some guitars so let's let's grab the guitar back so you would have heard you would have heard in the opening there that i was playing some bass so what we're going to do here in this one is we're going to set up and i'm just going to record something new um i i haven't done music i haven't done any new music for a while and i wanted to uh, just create something so i thought why not kill two birds with one stone which is a terrible saying by the way kill two birds with one stone poor birds but why don't we uh, multitask here or at least uh, have two functions for one thing so i'm going to go funky guitars that's all i'm going to call this because here's what i've set up i've grabbed there we go. Funky guitars. I've grabbed some drummer loops. So all I've done here is gone to my Apple loops and I've come in here and I've searched out some of these cool yellow drummer loops. And I've got four bars of intro here of Benny doing his thing. And then I've got 16 bars to just do a bit of jamming over. So if we play this, here's our little intro that we're going to work it into. And then we're going to hit it in here and it's going to go. And we're going to play some funky bass and some funky guitar. Uh, what what app? What up? I thought you said what app? What up? <laughs> I was about to do this. I'm like, oh dear. Uh, if, if we're getting a question that says, what app are you using in a show called GarageBand Weekly? That might be a little bit weird. Uh, so uh, I'll delete this out because we're going to show you step by step how we set up here to record a uh, guitar. But um, we're doing that a bit later, in fact. What I'm going to show, first of all, is that um, when you're playing guitar, and regardless of what sort of guitar you're playing, a noise gate is pretty essential. So our plugin of the week this week is the Nembrini Analog Rack Noise Gate. So if we add a guitar, let's add a bass guitar, and we'll add a distorted bass. So to go here, we go bass, we go more sounds, uh, and, well, hang on, no, we don't. <laughs> Get it together, Johns. We go amp sim, and then we're going to go here, more sounds, and we're going to go to the bass amp boutique. Why don't we go with uh, something that's going to have a bit of a distorted sound? What about a woolly mammoth sound here? And what we need to do is go to our inputs. We're going to put it on input two because that's what we're in on this one. We've got our fuzz machine here going on and uh, we're going to monitor. So get ready. There we go. So what can you hear? In the background, you can hear some noise. And GarageBand kindly auto puts on the noise gate there, right? And you can hear that when I'm not playing, the noise goes away. But here's the problem. The noise gate in GarageBand is either on or it's off. And I don't know about you, but I don't like, I don't like the on and the off like that. I like to be able to control my noise gate a little bit better than that. So that's what, that's where the plugin I'm going to show you here comes in super duper handy. It's the Nembrini analog rack noise gate. In fact, why don't I uh, turn off the monitoring just while I get this set up. So monitoring's off now. 
So you're not going to hear that background noise. So let's jump in here. We're going to go to plugins and EQ. We're going to go uh, edit and we're going to hit the plus button here. Now we can go to audio unit extensions. And if we scroll on down, we're going to find the NA, the Nembrini Audio Analog Rack Noise Gate. Now this is free, probably buried the lead on that one. This is free. So we can use this on any track. Now we're going to hit the edit button here and we're going to move this up to the top. Now we can't bring it above the built-in noise gate, but we are going to bring it here above the compressor just so that it's the first thing that we get here. And we're going to turn off the garage band noise gate. So why is this noise gate better? Uh, yes, we'll register later. So this noise gate is better because not only do you have a range, you also have a threshold here. So I'm going to show you how this actually works for you uh, with this. So we need to turn our monitoring back on so that we can actually hear our guitar again. So let's come back to our bass and we'll go to our little, little icon there. We'll hit monitor. There we are. Now you can already hear our noise gate isn't on here, but the Nembrini noise gate is actually doing the work for us. So if we come back to the noise gate, what we'll do, if we turn that range all the way down, you can see it's doing nothing, right? It's not turning down at all. If we turn the range all the way up, it's gonna turn it off completely. And when we dial this threshold in, At whatever threshold, whatever dB, it starts hearing noise, that's what it's going to do. So if we turn this threshold all the way up, you can see there on the display, and you can hear here. I'm playing quite loudly, but because I'm not hitting up to that minus 15 dB on the threshold, nothing's coming through. As I bring the threshold down, and I play loudly, oh, drop my pick, it will now start coming through, right? So it will actually start coming through there. But here's the cool news. Here's the good news of all of this stuff is that we don't have to have it at zero. So let, what, what I normally do is I turn the range all the way up and I find. I find the point where we need it to be. And then I dial back the range. Because listen to this. As the range comes back, we're hearing more of it, right? At zero, we hear everything. And hear how it's just taken it down. So you still hear a bit of that natural hiss that you kind of want. And that just means that when you're playing here, when it turns it off, it's not turning it completely off. So that is why I love the Nembrini noise gate. And whenever I'm playing, I always put that on at the start of my chain. So uh, we'll come out of there. Uh, and, and it worked well for vocals. So if you've got uh, hiss and sort of background noise in your vocals, you can use the Nembrini noise gate on your vocal as well. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll shout some metal vocals or something in, the, in this. No, we're doing, we're doing funk. That's right. We're doing funk here today. So uh, let's just change up the bass. So yeah, that, there it is. That's it. If we turn the fuzz off here, you can hear it a little bit better. And it's probably just a little bit on the, uh, uh, on the still on the unnatural side. So you can just tweak it and tweak it to taste to find the, the threshold. Because again, if you turn the threshold all the way down. <laughs> you can get some really weird, really weird effects there. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll leave that one for now. But uh, yeah, the Nimbri you Noise know, Gate works well when you're starting to play some guitars. We're going to go back to Scratch here now and uh, delete that one out. The other thing that I wanted to talk about here, and uh, I'll bring you over to this view to show this. So what I'm using here today, and uh, by the way, if you want to uh, learn all the gear that I use, head over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. But uh, as you can see here, I've got my iPad set up here, and the iPad here is being uh, run by the Steinberg UR22C. I've got my guitar plugged in to the second input here, and uh, I don't have my monitoring on, but when I play, the guitar is going to come through there. Now, this is connected to my iPad Pro via the Tendac powered USB hub you can see over here. So it's plugged into that. And then that's only got one thing plugged in, which is the Steinberg UR22C. That then goes out to this dongle over here, which uh, you can see plugged into the side of the iPad. And this is, you know what I should do? Let's go into solo view mode so you can actually see this a bit better. So this is your dongle. And that's your USB-C dongle. Now, you don't have to use the Apple one. You can use any USB-C dongle. It's a good thing about iPads that have USB-C. 
But if you're using an earlier iPad that has a lightning connection, you need to use, say it with me folks, the genuine Apple lightning to USB 3 adapter. If you try to use a knockoff adapter, it's not going to work. So I'm just going to move my water bottle there in the way. Uh, but if you're using USB-C, you can use anything. Now you can just go straight from the Steinberg straight into here without the powered hub. I always like to have a powered hub in the way because it just means that it manages all your power and you don't ever get those issues. Sometimes you get issues that are things like this device uses too much power and it won't work. So I always use a powered USB hub and then some sort of dongle and then you can plug in USB devices till the cows proverbially come home and you'll be good to go. So what I wanted to show you here for the tip of the week is that when you are setting your gain here, so uh, what I'll do is I'll bring up, uh, I'll bring up the screen. So we'll bring us up into this view here. So when you're setting up in GarageBand, so let's, uh, let's create our first guitar track. We're gonna hit the plus button here and we're gonna go to the amp. This time we're gonna go with a cleaner kind of bass tone. Why don't we go with the, uh, the bad attitude bass tone. Well, so the first thing you need to do is select the right input. So because as you could see down here, I'm in input two, I need to tap on this one and I need to tap this one and go input two. So that's gonna bring the input on and I then need to make sure that monitoring is turned on. So as soon as we turn monitoring on there, we're working fine, sounding good, yeah? So no problem at all there. I'll just turn the monitoring back off for a moment. The, the thing that you need to be really careful of here when you're using a, a device like this, so when you're using an external audio interface like I'm doing here, is to set your input gain. So to do that, if we come back into the solo layout, every channel on an audio interface has its own input gain slider. And as I play here, I'll just play with one hand. Oh, we don't have the monitoring on. <laughs> I, should have, I should just leave it on. I just don't like, I should have put the noise gate back on, right? All right, there's a couple of things there. We'll just turn it down. So can you hear that when I'm playing at, say, so that's at 12 o'clock, that's at half volume. So when we're playing at like a nice half volume, you're not getting a lot of background noise or hiss. The noise floor is almost non-existent. And that's about where you probably want to set things. If you set too high, let's turn it up to, say, three o'clock on the dial here. Can you hear there now? I'll just turn the uh, the noise gate off from GarageBand so you can hear the noise. Can you now hear that we've got a bit of noise in the background? So you've got a little bit of that hiss. Now what about when we go way too far? Let's turn it all the way up. Let's turn it up to 11. Hopefully you can now hear that if you're hearing this noise, you're not in a good space. And uh, block your ears for a moment, people, because I'll just play a little bit with it up like this. All right, let's turn that back down. You would have noticed two things there. You would have noticed that the peak light was coming on. Now, this is different on different audio interfaces, but it'll always have some sort of indicator. On things like the uh, iRig, uh, the iRig Pro and the iRig uh, HD, that will be the light that will go from green to orange to red if you're peaking. Uh, and if it's on something like a Steinberg or a Focusrite or an M-Audio, there'll usually be a peak like there. So when you're playing, as soon as you start seeing that peak light coming on, you can hopefully also hear something else. Could you hear the distortion? Yeah, so the distortion's there, but it's also, I'll do it one more time just for, for effect. Sorry, my, my phone was my phone was focusing on the head of the uh, of the guitar there, uh, my, my camera. So uh, yeah, I'll do it one more time. We'll turn this up and you'll notice two things. You'll notice distortion, but you'll also hear a limiting kind of sound, a compression in there. So we'll turn it up to an unadvisable level and take a listen. Hear how it's like flattening out the tone of everything else. You can't hear anything else because it's doing that. It's actually sort of going in and out. Anytime you hear that pumping, unless you're actually trying to get a pumping effect, which is a whole thing in itself, but if you hear pumping, it's probably the wrong way around. Like you probably need to turn it down. And here's the thing. The reason I wanted to make this the tip of the week this week is that most people will turn their volume up too loud. 
Like very few people turn it down too quiet. And because mostly, for especially for us older dudes and dudettes, it's because we came from an analog world where you had to really push it. Like you, you had to drive the analog gear and getting a little bit of that analog warmth and that analog distortion was actually okay. In a digital world, you get clipping, you get pumping, it sounds like crud. So you don't want to do that. All right, let's come back over here to GarageBand and do a couple of little test runs here just to show you the difference and what a good input versus a bad input would look like. Uh, yes, Thomas Christ says hitting the compressor way too hard with that. Uh, so we've got ourselves set up here. Uh, we'll just uh, come back into our bass track and we'll turn it back on. All right, so we're good to go here. So, All right, so we've got this. This is at 12 o'clock. So what we're going to do is record this at 12 o'clock. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that the volume of the input over here on your gear has nothing to do with this volume here. This is your output volume. So if you can't hear your bass, do not turn it up over here. Turn it up on your actual controls, your software controls, because this is output gain, and this on your gear is input gain. It's uh, easier to see if you go to a microphone here, you can see it. Uh, they have a clearer view of this because on the microphone, see how we've got input gain over here on the left? Now again, because I'm using an audio interface, it says channel one there. You can't control it here. You have to control it with your gear. But output gain, you can turn up and down here. So when you're recording, do not touch your input gain. Get your input gain set right and then leave it <laughs> and only touch your output gain. So if I was playing along with this, like say we're doing this and I'm trying to play my bass and I can't hear it, maybe before you reach for your input gain, turn up your output gain. All right, should we do a, um, should we do a bit of a test run here? Let's, uh, let's play some bass, shall we? We've recorded in a bass part, and let's take a look at it. Yeah, right. So that's at the 12 o'clock setting, and you can actually hear it in the background right now. Let's, let's solo it and take a bit of a listen and a look. Not bad, yeah? In fact, what we'll do is we'll turn off the monitoring so we're only hearing the raw sound. And here's the problem. A lot of people look at that and they're like, that waveform is way too low. And it's probably slightly low. We'll do some experimenting and I'll show you a couple of different ways. So if we go here and we duplicate that one out, let's now turn ourselves up to three o'clock, shall we? So I'm going to use the exact same settings here. We're going to come into the base and we're going to turn the monitoring back on so that we can hear it from there. And we're going to unsolo it because we had that problem there before. Uh, boom. All right, so we've got both of the, actually we'll mute that first bass track, otherwise I'll have a whole bunch of bass tracks going on. So what I'm going to do is down here on the gear, I'm going to turn this from 12 o'clock around to 3 o'clock. Now, if you're not familiar with your clock settings, it just means it's pointing directly to the right now, like 3 o'clock on an analog clock face. I was um, I was talking to someone the other day, and I started using terms like 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock, and they, had, they were like, old oh, man, I've got no idea what you're talking about. I'm like, oh, yeah, clock faces, you know, analog clocks. And they're just like, oh, so yeah, I have to be careful. And that wasn't trying to be patronizing, by the way. If you don't need to know what an analog clock is and you can read a digital one, why would you need to in 2021? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I say all that to say, let's record in another bass take here on this one. But this time we're at uh, three o'clock. And uh, as you'll be able to hear with our bass sound, we have a lot more noise. And we're going to have a little bit more of a driven kind of tone here because we're driving the preamp a little harder. So let's uh, hit the record button here and we'll do a... There you go. 
Uh, yeah, that's true, actually. L Luriality says, uh, yeah, the iPhone does have an analog clock. True. Very true. All right. So look at that. Okay, we're at three o'clock. Now let's take a look at this waveform in isolation. Yeah. So it's a lot chunkier, yeah? We'll turn the monitoring off there. I should be using these monitoring buttons. I don't know why I keep going into the other one. That's the quicker way to turn your monitoring on and off. So let's solo this and take a listen back with no other sound coming through except this bass. So can you hear how we're getting a little bit more of that compressed and limited kind of sound? Now, if you're going for that, more power to you. Go with it. But uh, when you bring it in here with the drums... It's just bringing in a little bit too much noise, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so anyway. Now, I was going to go to a lower setting, but I don't think we need to go any lower than that 12 o'clock. But what I want to do is let's do a third and final take. And all we need to do is duplicate out that track. So we've got the exact same thing. Turn our monitoring back on and there we are. And as you can see, um, when we come over to here, let me just show you the settings here. So you can see we are actually slightly clipping. You might not be able to see it, but the red light is coming on when we're playing over here occasionally. It's just flicking on. So we're right at the top of that range. So what that's telling me is that we are somewhere. We, what we want to be is somewhere between this and this. We don't want to be that low because your waveform's not big enough. It makes it really hard to edit. We don't want to be this chunky because we're seriously in danger of hitting the top end and clipping. So instead of being at 12 o'clock or three o'clock, where do we need to be? Well, we need to be at about 1.30. So we're just going to dial this back one and a half pegs. And what you can hear there is that a lot of the noise has gone away. There's still just a little hint. And you want to find that balance. You want to get enough gain going through without hearing the noise. So it's called the noise floor. And you want to find the spot where that noise floor is sitting so that you can actually record it in. So let's come back over here. I'll bring up GarageBand again so you can see what we're doing. We will mute out those. And I'll do a similar one. I kind of like the... Um I like that kind of vibe. So we're going to record that one in again, uh, a similar sort of thing to that to give us a little bit of a funky. There we go. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's going to be around about that sweet spot. Yeah, it could probably go another nodule. In fact, why don't we just do one more? Because that was right there. Maybe we need to be 2 o'clock. And, uh, in fact, Joe here in the chat is saying 2 o'clock is usually her sweet spot. So we'll bring it back around to 2 o'clock here and we'll... Uh yep, still not clipping, still getting good. And I didn't play it particularly well that time. So let's go one more time with feeling and record in this bass part. <laughs> there you go. So that one's uh, not too bad. That's not too bad. And there you go. Yeah, that's a that's almost looking perfect. Whenever I see something like that, we'll turn off the monitoring. Let's play this back again. There's just that little bit of noise. But you can see there that compared to this first one that we did, yeah, the first one is going to be really hard to edit because you can't even see when I'm not playing properly because the, the, the waves are so low. But this one here, way too over the top. So look, mix with your ears, not with your eyes. But sometimes looking at the visual is going to give you a much better indication of how you're tracking and making sure that you're not overdoing 
your bass. So there you go, your input gain settings. Uh, whether you're playing bass or guitar or any other instrument, super duper important and uh, make sure you get it right because you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be overloading things. You want to have it at a nice, comfortable volume. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll, uh, we'll continue on. We're going to jump in and record some more guitars in just a moment, but we'll just take a quick pause for a drinks break. Excuse me, a drinks break and uh, to uh, check in if we have any questions going on here. Spilling water all over my gear. That's always a good idea. Uh, so I think I had a question there. Yeah, so why do non-Apple adapters not work? It's a good question, Bear. Um, the short version is that Apple use uh, what's called MFI, which is originally was for made for iPod. So MFI is like a chip that's actually in the cable or in the dongle itself. And that means that it can have things like uh, firmware updates and it can mean that when uh, Apple change their iOS, it'll support those. Now, on one side of the fence, people would say, well, Apple only put that in there so that they uh, can own and monopolize all the cables and all the adapters and no one can use anyone else's. They have to use Apple's. That's one way to look at it. Uh, the other way is that they want to protect the integrity because there's some very cheap and crappy cables sold on Amazon and eBay that if you plug into your phone or your iPad are probably going to do, you, well, not probably, but are potentially going to do you some damage. So uh, Apple want you to use their stuff because then they can support you. And that's the problem. It, almost every, so th there's two reasons why people's audio interfaces and microphones and keyboards and everything else aren't working. Number one reason is usually that they're not using the genuine uh, Apple Lightning to USB 3 adapter. So they're using a, a knockoff and then Apple update and then it no longer works. And it may have worked before or it may work intermittently or it may not work at all. So that's sort of phase one. And then number two is power. So the reason that the uh, the Lightning-based iPads, is you need to use the Apple Lightning to USB 3 adapter is that it has that additional Lightning port in there. And you need to be able to power it up, power up the, the device that you're actually using by making sure that your iPad is being charged at the same time. Otherwise, it doesn't have enough power to power the devices you're plugging into it. So basically, whenever I get a question on any video where it's someone saying, my insert name of USB device is not working with my iPhone or iPad, I go through those two things. I say, are you using a genuine adapter and do you have a powered hub or have it plugged in using that USB 3 adapter to AC mains power? Anytime the answer is no to either of those and they change that up, it usually fixes it. Uh, I'm not here to tell you whether you should like or dislike that that model and the fact that Apple do that. Many will say you're paying the Apple tax, you're paying the gullible tax, you're drinking the Kool-Aid but it just works. And and my argument is always this. I don't like paying 40 or $50 for a piece of plastic any more than the next person, but I also really hate when my gear is not reliable. So, and I've bought, I've bought one. So for my lightning based iPads, I used them for five years. I bought one Apple lightning to USB three adapter. It is still working. It still works perfectly. It works flawlessly every time. And I don't have to do that dance of what order do I plug it in? Because the manufacturer said, if you don't plug this in before this, then you, you get into trouble. So yeah, that, that's that's the bottom line with this sort of stuff. If, if, if you want to try, uh, and I say to people, more power to you. A lot of people said, hey, I've been using this off this, you know, this dodgy adapter that I bought on Amazon for 10 bucks for five years and it works perfectly. Great. <laughs> that is cool. But if Apple update to iOS 16 and then suddenly it doesn't work, uh, you'll come to me and ask why and I'll tell you this exact thing. I'll have this exact same rant again. <laughs> All righty. Uh, let's, uh, let's continue on and let's see we've got the other. Hello, Frigzy Blanket. Hello to you. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, analog clock faces are almost photo always photographed at 1010 because they believe the happy face sells more timepieces. Truth. It is so true, um, and it's uh, it, it is weird because um, the, uh, the, there was a, an article where um, people were selling phones, and this same that same time is put on the phones on their digital display. And I think it's just because the marketing dude read uh, in in the marketing one hundred and one that you always have your clock set to ten ten, not realizing that a digital clock doesn't really matter, doesn't really need to be at ten ten. It can be at any time you like. But yeah, you're right. They don't ever want to have frowning moustache faces like, mm. if you had something that was at, what, like 4.40 p.m., <laughs> it'd be like, frowning moustache clock. And no one wants to buy a frowning moustache clock. All right. Uh, we're getting a little bit sidetracked, aren't we? Let's uh, let's get in. We've got, a, we've got ourselves a funky, a funky sort of bass going on here now. So it's time to grab Les. Les is my Les Paul. And 
Les doesn't get a lot of uh, a lot of time to shine these days. So uh, we've plugged in Les, and uh, we've got the exact same setup here. So refresher, if you're just joining us, or if you didn't see the first part where I plugged in, if we go over here, what I've got is at this end I've got a guitar, and uh, it's plugged in. So the butt end of the guitar, I can't even get into the shot. No, sorry. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you know what it looks like to plug a guitar in. And the other end is going into here. Just a standard TS instrument guitar cable is going from there to there. Let's move my water bottle. That looks janky. So we've got a standard instrument cable. We now need to set up GarageBand to accept this. And again, I've showed you the setup that we've used here before. So let's jump over here and uh, we'll bring GarageBand back into the mix so you can see our setup. We've already had uh, our bass and Benny there. We're going to add, we're going to show you the flexibility of the GarageBand guitar amp sims here today because they are super cool. Let's uh, tap the plus button here. We've got to go to the amp here. Now, if we hit more sounds, this will give us the ability. Go back to main categories. You've got your bass and you've got your guitar. Now we're playing guitar now, so we're going to use guitar. And uh, you've got a whole bunch of clean, you've got a whole bunch of crunchy, and you've got a whole bunch of distorted and processed tones. So we're going to we're going to try and layer up maybe like four guitar tracks, and maybe we'll pick one uh, from each of these. So why don't we try? Because we were talking wah before. Let's get something here that has the wah pedal on here. Because uh, I haven't actually tried this before and um, I can't remember if it works. But we're going to re record in a guitar part and then I'll see if I can wire, if I can merge that recording to wire it afterwards. And we'll see if this is going to work. Because we're doing something a bit funky here. So what do we need to do to set up our guitar? So we're going to go back to that guitar amp. We need to make sure that we've got the right input set. So we're going to tap on our input setting here. We've got channel one. We want channel two. So we're going to select channel two. And we also want to turn monitoring on. If we turn monitoring on and play our guitar we realize that our guitar is ridiculously out of tune. But I did that on purpose because what I wanted to do is show you that GarageBand's so cool, it's got a built-in tuner. Yeah, we can tune our guitar right here in GarageBand. So let's do some amazing fun tuning, shall we? And look, it's not, it's not a perfect tuner, but it does the job. Jeez, my G-string was a little bit loose. Don't you hate it when your G-string's all the way down? You have to tighten your G-string. That's a bit comfortable. There we go. And you can hear already that the tone that we've got going through there, this, this clean wah tone is actually pretty good. If you don't know, uh, if you want to hear what it sounds like without anything going through, if you come in here and you just go to audio recorder, you go more sounds, and from your main categories here, you go down to fun, and you go clean. You can actually get a feel for what it's going to sound like. We'll put it over to channel two, which is our guitar channel, and we'll turn monitoring on. And just turn the output gain up a bit. So that same guitar sound. <laughs> That's the thing. So that's what it would sound like completely with nothing on it. So you can hear that when we use our, uh, our guitar tones here, it actually sounds pretty darn cool. Pretty cool. And with the wah there, but of course, uh, we, we can't play one-handed. So we're probably gonna have to play Uh, Barry Glenn says, I didn't know how to tune a, there you go. Does it work through a mic for acoustic instruments too? Alas, no, Barry, but, um, and that's a pain in the butt because you can't use it. You have to plug it in. It only works with plugged in instruments. So if you're using a mic and, and recording an acoustic guitar, it won't work the same. All right, let's just remember what I played here. And, uh, we're going to play in a little bit of a funky kind of beat with this clean wah sound. So, uh. Let's 
something a bit like that. I reckon we get a bit of a lead part going on with this one. All right, so we're ready to rock. Uh, oh, you know what we haven't done? Not taking my own advice. We haven't checked. Input gain. I think we're about right. I think the input gain is okay. Sometimes you'll find that you need to put your input gain down a bit for your guitars and your bass, you need it to go up a little bit. Let's just do a test recording and see if this input gain is going to work for us. I forgot that we kept playing. That's all right. We'll, uh, we'll come back to here. So, yeah, look, it might be a little bit turned up a little bit too loud on this. Let's just uh, take a listen back without, the, uh, without that on. The other thing is that I'm using my, uh, the, the pickup at the end of the guitar here. I might want to go to the middle to get some of the neck pickup in here because it's sounding a little bit harsh. So we're going to try this again. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go on the guitar. I'm going to change this to the middle there so I get both pickups here on the two humbuckers on the, the Les Paul. And I'm also going to turn this down. At the moment, it's on uh, the dot there, which is like the two o'clock dot. We're just going to just gradually bring it down closer to the one o'clock dot. I don't want to go down too much because we want to have a decent amount of gain going through, but not as much as we had there. All right, let's uh, turn on our... We'll play something up around here. You, what you're probably also hearing there is that you are... There is a small amount of delay or latency here. Now, that's almost unavoidable. It's only... It's in the vicinity of like a few milliseconds. But uh, it's, it's something to keep in mind. There is a way to get around that by monitoring directly through your interface, but then you can't hear the effects that are going through your... Um, your, your your guitar amp so it's a bit of a trade-off here that there's that small amount of delay and you're probably only hearing it more so because you're hearing you're hearing the guitar coming through my microphone as i'm playing in fact what i'll do is i'll turn the mic down while i record this time so you're only hearing the guitar amp sound so uh let's hit record and give this one a crack How did that come through? Let's see. Oh, see, now we're a little low. It's okay, though. Uh, we can still see it there. We probably needed to be somewhere between the last two, but we'll go with it here for now. And uh, I didn't actually like that intro bit that I did there. So let's just play it back from, uh, from this part here. And we'll bring it in with our uh, guitar and bass. <laughs> So that is all in there now. Uh, so what we could do, we can change up. So this is the cool thing about recording here using your guitar amp sims is that we can now change this up. So if we don't like the clean wah, let's try like a 50s rock and roll sound. Oh, I like that. I like the little bit of delay on that, yeah? What about a lush delay from the tone collection? Nah, too, too clinky. What about some rich harmonics? Oh, there's some nice. So you get some nice uh, sort of saturation and crunchiness in that one. Sparkling clean. Not bad. 
I actually quite like the uh, the fifties rock and roll. Yeah, with that little bit of a delay in there. Kind of cool. Uh, what I did want to show though is I wanted to uh, see if uh, if we can do what I think we can do. And I haven't tried this in forever, but you've got your wah pedal here, yeah. And uh, we couldn't do that. We couldn't do the wiring while we were playing. But I believe that through the power of the merge recordings function here, if we go to plugins and EQ, uh, no, wrong one. If we go to track settings under here and we go recording and we turn on, oh, no, so we don't have it. We don't have the merge recording function here for a good, oh, yeah. I thought that might be the case. Unfortunately, I don't think we can do that because uh, what I would normally do with, with something like this, what you can do uh, on other tracks is under your track settings, you can use merge recordings mode uh, but I think you can only do that for like your virtual instruments it doesn't look like I, I, I couldn't remember if you could use that to to add wah to this I think we tried it before and you can do it on the virtual guitar but you can't do it on the real guitar which kind of sucks so let's go back to that 50s effect then because I kind of dig it yeah I like it uh, the orange amp sim is cool too uh, yeah so the rich harmonics that it goes through like a let's let's be honest it's orange it's called the sunshine stack <laughs> yeah it's it's an orange um but we'll go with the 50s rock and roll because i kind of like the sound of this one kind of like it uh... cool uh so let's uh let's move on a bit because we are we're going to go over time here today what a surprise pete's got to go over time uh but what i'll tend to do here is if i'm layering up some more guitars we'll duplicate out that first guitar and then uh, we'll go back in and uh, change the settings. So we'll this time go with something a little crunchy, shall we? And when it comes to crunch, I actually really dig. The Rio Grande is probably my favorite tone here. It uses a bit of a martial kind of tone and uh, we'll need to turn the monitoring on. <laughs> go so i, I kind of like that one which has a bit of the vintage drive on there the other one that i dig in here is sunshine drive but there's so many this is more of the orange amp sound <laughs> that we might use this one for this so let, let's layer up another track in here and we'll just play along so All right, i'm just going to play some muted little notes here on this one two three do some uh, why don't we do some of that let's do that we'll come back here and we'll just play it from this b section and we'll just play some like power chords. I think I'm trying to do too much. I'm just going to play. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe it'll come when we've got we've got a bit more of a layer and we can spread them out a little bit because uh, maybe these two together with just... I think it just needs to go down in the mix. Yeah. So anyway, there's a, there's a way to use some crunchier tones. Uh, in the interest of time, why don't we duplicate that one out? Bang, duplicate. And uh, we'll turn those off, turn that one on, come into here and uh, find ourselves... Uh, some uh, distorted tones, yeah? You need some distortion in your life. Now, I kind of like the power chord. There's a bunch of good ones in here. You've got like a classic sort of brownstone sound. Um, I just realized the volume is down. That's why we're not hearing much. So, do, 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 do. 
There you go. So uh, we've got like a brownstone sound, uh, which is sort of like a fender kind of uh, brownstone. It's like, a, it's like a glam rock if you want to go a bit... Uh... With like a nice phase tripper on there. So you'll notice that every time we do a different one here, it's changing up the amp type and it's also adding and removing some different um, pedals. <laughs> bit of industrial overdrive my favorite in this one not surprisingly because I'm a, I'm a, a punk uh, I'm a Seattle sound kind of guy is the power chord so Uh, yes, GarageBand does have cool amps, as uh, folks here in the chat are saying. We've got some great amp sounds. So, I mean, this sound's probably not going to work so well with our funky sort of thing that we're doing here for, a power, for some power chords. So maybe we'll... <laughs> maybe we'll just do some sort of low chung, chugger chuggers and just see if this is going to work. Maybe, maybe not. I think we've lost our tuning again. Uh, folks were talking about tuners before. I actually generally use the uh, Snark tuners. I've got about three or four of these. They do pop off easily. So we'll, uh, maybe we'll, maybe we'll tune up with the Snark just to get ourselves in a bit better tuning state here. What the heck, Aruni? Why does it keep popping off? All right. Okay, so let's just uh, get ourselves. I'm gonna put myself into drop D. Everything was just a bit flat. The G string was really flat again. Time to restring, I think. Yeah, drop D, baby. All right. What I'm going to do here is I'll just turn off everything else here. Because we'll change this, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll try it. We'll try and see if this will work in with our original idea. We'll just turn it down a little bit. All right, let's record this one in here. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, so it's... it's a, It's a good sound on its own, but it's not going to really work in with all these, is it? Maybe we'll just put that as like an intro bit there. We'll leave it there for now. All right, one more type to go, and uh, hopefully you're, you're learning here. If you've, if you've poo-pooed the GarageBand amps before and you've never really played around with them, hopefully you're learning that they actually have some pretty darn cool tones in here. So we'll go in here, we'll go to the process tone. Now, this is where you get some fun. You get some really cool stuff. So this is where you can get things like the insane vibe wah. Just turn that volume up a little bit. La 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 la. And uh, what I did forget actually is that with ones that have a wah, we can turn on wah 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 wah. We can turn on that mode. It can't see me. I'm not close enough to the camera. Can I get close enough? Wah wah wah. Come on. Why can't you see me? Wah, 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 No, it's not. It's not working because I'm not close enough to the camera. Oh, am I? No, now it's working. Yay. We kind of have to do some vibe wire now, don't we? <laughs> Swallow my own spit. All right. <clears throat> let's, uh, let, let's, <laughs> now it's just showing the wah. Um, all right, let's see if I can work out. I'll come up onto. All right. This is going to be experimental. I've never actually recorded with the wah. But, but now it's not working again. Come back. Hello. I'd like you to work now. Ha, ba, ba. 
There we go. I kind of have to. I kind of have to close out trying to do a guitar solo with the wah using my mouth. <laughs> Who knew it was going to come to this? Now, what, what key were we in again? We're down there. Okay. All right. I need to turn up my output gain so I can actually hear what I'm doing all the way up. Hello. Seems to take a while to engage. Hello. Yep. Uh, let's do this. Uh, so Melky Plays is asking, what's the face in the corner? So this is only available if you're using uh, an iPad or an iPhone that has Face ID. So your iPad Pros, your iPad Air, for, no, Air, I don't think the Airs do. So I, mean, I think it's only the iPad Pros and uh, iPhone 10s and later. Anything that doesn't have the button that uses Face ID, uh, then uh, it'll it'll do this. So it won't be available for everyone, unfortunately. All right, let's, uh, bah, 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 bah. I keep talking like this now, so. Let's play some wah, wah, wah. Oh man, I, I, I started this stream with the sole goal of having fun and uh, I've definitely succeeded in my goal and hopefully at the same time I've showed you some of the cool behind the scenes stuff of the GarageBand <laughs> amp sims here in GarageBand. Uh, why don't we just, uh, let's, um, let's pan some of these, let's just give ourselves some width here so that we can play around, power core can go down the middle. Why don't we bring our vibe wire to that side? We'll bring uh, our sunshine drive to that side, and we'll put that there, and we'll put that there. Yeah, just just so we can spread things out a little bit here, uh, and see what what concoction. We'll just do a little bit of mixing on the fly here, and see what we've been able to create here in uh, in a little about uh, just twenty minutes of of recording here in GarageBand. <laughs> And don't forget that, uh, again, you've got the full flexibility to come in here and change any of these up. And you've even got the ability. So if you've recorded these using the stock amp sims and you want to use something else, you want to use some tone bridge, you want to use some, uh, some uh, what, uh, tone, uh, what am I trying to say? Anything, a bias, bias FX or whatever you want. These are just audio. So you can use these on something else. So if we grabbed, say, this wah that we just did, or let's, let's grab something better. Let's grab this <laughs> bad attitude bass. If we just slide this on down to here, we've now got this on just a regular track so it's just a regular clean bass sound and then what we can do with that is come in here go to your plugins and eq and actually add so we could add we'll bring it all the way back around we could add mix box on this one and uh, bring in some mix box effects in here again now that we've updated to the latest version and we could add in uh, a guitar amp here so we could go in and grab say the uh, jazz amp 120 and uh, do we have a preset on here let's just grab a preset uh, a Let's Funk preset, and uh, we can play, right? And you can add a bunch of other stuff, you can put tape saturation on there. So 
So the, the sky's literally the limit when it comes to this sort of stuff. And if you don't want to buy something like Mixbox, there's things, like I said, like Tonebridge that's free that lets you do a little bit of stuff on there. Hope you had some fun here today. Uh, I certainly had a whole heap of fun here with the setup, with uh, with what's going on here. I needed to get myself inspired to create a little more music, and um, I think that's what I did here today. Don't forget, uh, once again, that if you want to find out more about GarageBand iOS, jump on down there, studiolivetoday.com slash garageband. That is your one-stop shop, my FAQ for all things GarageBand. And... Uh you can check out what's going on down there. Um, and uh, yeah, so what we got there is all of the different links to all the different things that you can do in GarageBand. If you are new to GarageBand, you can check out my course there, which is just $10, the beginner's course, and uh, all of my FAQ questions are answered there. And uh, yeah, while you're down there, in the description, because that's down in the description, as well as a bunch of other information and links. You can hit the thumbs up if you had some fun today. If you enjoyed uh, joining in and grooving along here with some guitars, hit the thumbs up button and leave me any comments. If you're watching on the replay and you had a burning question, uh, not, not not any other sort of burning, but burning question about GarageBand, please leave it in the comments. I'm down there all day, every day, answering your questions and happy to help out. So that is going to do it for this one. I hope you had fun. And I hope you enjoy some guitar in GarageBand.